Okay, so now we're recording and now I'm going to go live on Facebook. Okay, so welcome everybody. So um, before we begin, we would like to acknowledge that Brampton Library is located on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and before them the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Huron and Wendat. We also acknowledge the many First Nations, Métis, Inuit and other global Indigenous people that now call Brampton their home. We are honoured to live, work and enjoy this land. So uh, as I mentioned to those of you who are joining in uh, Zoom, my name is Megan, my pronouns are she and her and I'm a librarian with the Brampton Library. Um, I'm joined by my uh, colleague Sukjeet. If you want to just wave and say hi, Sukjeet. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. All right, so Sukjeet and I are really going to be in the background of this uh, program. We're here to answer any questions, well, to pass along any questions that come through our Facebook live stream. Um, so if you have any questions, if you're viewing us on Facebook live, please just put them in the comments and I'll add them to the chat here in Zoom with everybody else who's here in Zoom. Um, so yes, welcome to the first part of our Learn to Camp series, The Rouge, Canada's First National Urban Park, which is presented by Parks Canada's Learn to Camp. And don't forget to join us next week for Know Before You Go, your first front country camping trip. Um, before we begin, we'd like to remind everyone about our summer clubs that are going on at Brampton Library. So if you just visit bramptonlibrary.ca, if you registered for this event, uh, you'll find it at the same website. So bramptonlibrary.ca, and then you select summer clubs tab on the left hand side of the top menu bar. So we have programs for kids, for teens, for adults, for all ages, with lots of activities and chances to win some great prizes over the the summer. Um, while in-branch programming is still not being offered, though we do have some branches open for limited uh, in-branch services right now. Um, but we do have some offline activities to uh, that you can join in through our summer clubs, as well as online activities, book logging, things like that. Um, some of our summer clubs offline activities include uh, the Then and Now Photo Challenge and the Newcomer Self-Directed or Self-Guided Tour. So so you just have to join in uh, to our programs to see what all of that's about this summer. But today we're going to be talking about parks. So I'd like to begin by introducing our presenters for today. So first we have Briley. Briley, can you just say hello and give a wave? Hi, everyone. Briley is a student in the Master of Teaching program at the University of Toronto with an undergraduate degree in English from Ryerson University. Growing up in Muskoka sparked her early interest in outdoor education and moving to Toronto has reaffirmed her passion for promoting green spaces. Some areas near and dear to her are Algonquin Provincial Park, Masaga Provincial Park and Georgian Bay Islands National Park. She currently works for Parks Canada Learn to Camp team where she delivers presentations throughout the summer about camping, camping safety, wildlife awareness and camping 101. Next we have Emily. Emily, can you please say hello? Hi everyone. Emily is excited to be a Learn to Camp team member for a Rouge National Urban Park this summer. She is passionate about connecting people living in cities with outdoor experiences and promoting diversity in the outdoors. Emily was born in Shanghai, China, grew up in Calgary, Alberta, and worked previously at Banff National Park. She studies urban planning and development at the University of Toronto. In her spare time, she enjoys hiking, biking, and learning about gardening. So welcome to Emily and Briley. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to pass it on over to you to get started. That's amazing. Thank you so much for the warm introductions, Megan, and thank you for hosting us, Brampton Public Library. Uh, we're very excited to be here today to present about the Rouge, Canada's first national urban park. Um, as Megan have already mentioned, my name is Emily, and my pronouns are she and her. Um, I am a part of the Learn to Camp team at Parks Canada at Rouge National Urban Park in Toronto. And I am here with my coworker, Briley. So 
So Parks Canada would like to acknowledge that Rouge National Urban Park is built on the ancestral land of many nations, including the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, Huron-Wendat, and Mississaugas of the Credit. At Rouge National Urban Park, we are very proud to be working closely with 10 First Nations through the First Nations Advisory Circle on the establishment, planning, and management of the park. We work closely with our First Nation partners on a number of different projects, including archaeological fieldwork, restoration projects, and development of visitor facilities. So since we're all on a video call and not in Rouge National Urban Park, we would like to encourage you to learn the history of the land in your area by exploring the nativeland.ca website, uh, which Bradley will put in the chat. Um, I'd also like to know, since we're all joining from our homes, where everyone is located from, uh, where everyone is located in. Um, so myself, I am calling in from downtown Toronto. Um, are you all joining in from maybe Toronto, greater Toronto area, um, like Brampton, um, elsewhere in Ontario, or maybe even outside of Ontario? Uh, do let us know in the chat where you're joining us from. Okay, Greater Toronto area is mostly everyone is from there. We have one, one person coming in from somewhere else in Ontario. Um, would you like to share where you are coming from? <laughs> if you're comfortable. Otherwise, yeah, Greater Toronto area, that's where I'm coming from as well. Um, it's really great. The Rouge Park is probably less than two hour drive for everyone then. So thanks for voting, everyone. Um, so today we will begin by introducing Parks Canada, and then we'll dive into some information about Rouge National Urban Park. And we will touch on topics such as the park's history, its work, and how to stay connected along with some others. So if at any point during the presentation today, my audio is not working, or it's hard to hear, um, just please feel free to just let me know um, by just unmuting yourself. And um, sometimes I might have a hard time seeing the chat while I'm presenting. Here's a beautiful photo of Fundy National Park that's in New Brunswick. This photo highlights the Red Parks Canada chairs that can be found throughout national parks across the country. So if you ever get a chance to visit a national park and you see these red chairs, um, take a photo of them while you're there. The Parks Canada was the world's first national park service. It was founded in May 19, 1911. And today we protect 450 square kilometers of land in Canada. So that's equal to about eight times the size of Nova Scotia. This slide is our mandate here at Parks Canada. On behalf of the people of Canada, we protect and present nationally significant examples of Canada's natural and cultural heritage and foster public understanding, appreciation and enjoyment in ways that ensure their ecological and commemorative integrity for present and future generations. This is at Parks Canada Agency Charter, which came into effect in 2002. So here is a map which shows the location of all of our protected areas across the country. Parks Canada delivers its mandate through a combination of national parks, national historic sites, national marine conservation areas, and a national urban park. And we will explore each of these in a little more detail. This first way that we deliver Parks Canada's mandate is through national parks. Canada's national parks are some of the most iconic and treasured places in the country, 
providing critical habitat for countless species of plants and animals, and giving Canadians opportunities to connect with nature. Parks Canada conserves and protects 48 national parks across the country. The oldest national park is Banff National Park, which was established in 1885. Banff is among the oldest national parks in the world, along with Yellowstone National Park in the United States and Royal National Park in Australia. Parks Canada also co-manages many national parks and marine conservation areas alongside Indigenous peoples. Some examples of these are Guayanas National Park Reserve, National Marine Conservation Area, and Haida Heritage Site in BC, and Sermilic National Park in Nunavut. Do you, does anyone have a favorite national park that you have visited in the past, or maybe a national park that you would like to visit? Uh, please let us know in the chat. So on this map here, we can see is a map of Ontario and the green dots here show the location of the national parks in Ontario. The yellow dots are the locations of national historic sites. The blue dots in areas are the national marine conservation areas. So do you see number 21 that is purple right beside Toronto? So that is where Rouge is located. The map shows that in Ontario, we are fortunate to have five different national parks. But though they are a little far away, they definitely are worth checking out. The proximity of Rouge National Urban Park to Greater Toronto Area is part of what makes it really special. So Rouge is a perfect gateway to discovering the other national parks in Ontario and across Canada. The second way that we deliver Parks Canada's mandate is through National Historic Sites. Parks Canada preserves and manages 171 of Canada's more than 970 national historic sites. So Parks Canada national historic sites include national treasures, such as the Bar U Ranch in Alberta, the Fisgard Lighthouse in British Columbia, and Manoir Papineau in Quebec. The closest national historic sites to Rouge that's managed by Parks Canada are the HMCS Haida in Hamilton, a cluster of five sites in Niagara-on-the-Lake. They are Fort George, Fort Mississauga and Mississauga Point, Butler's Barracks, and the Battlefield of Fort George. Many of Canada's newest national historic sites are managed by Parks Canada. They reflect the history and culture of Indigenous people and the diverse cultural communities who make up Canada. And we have Parks Canada uh, manages four national marine conservation areas. It was in the 1980s that Parks Canada entered the domain of marine ecosystems. And the Guayanas National Marine Conservation Area is in BC. We have Saguenay Saint Laurent Marine Park in Quebec, Lake Superior National Marine Conservation Area in Ontario, and Fathom 5 National Marine Conservation Area, also in Toronto, in Ontario, and was the first National Marine Conservation Area established in Canada. National Marine Conservation Areas are an important area of conservation because Canada has a very rich marine heritage and has the longest coastline in the world. It's about over 243,000 kilometers along three different oceans and 9,500 more kilometers along the Great Lakes. And national marine conservation areas are very interesting because they have a distinct combination of physical and biological characteristics. Um, they include submerged lands and the water above them such as wetlands, estuaries, islands, other coastal lands, as well as any of the species like plants and animals that are found in the area. So when you visit a national marine conservation area, 
you will learn and see the protection of the seabeds and the water, the marine and coastal habitats of, of diverse terrestrial and aquatic species, and many geological, archaeological, and historic features that are unique to each conservation area. When you visit Fathom 5, there are even ship shipwrecks that have been conserved, which you can visit. So this beautiful picture is of Rouge National Urban Park, and it was taken only a half hour away from downtown Toronto at one of the last remaining working farms in the greater Toronto area that's also located inside Rouge National Urban Park. If you would like to see a video of Rouge National Urban Park, Bradley has, will be putting in a link to that video in the chat. So there was a lot of history at Rouge National Urban Park before Parks Canada came into the picture. In 1954, Hurricane Hazel caused flooding and property damage, leading to the formation of conservation authorities across the province of Ontario, who manage and protect land and communities from future flood damage. So the Toronto Region Conservation Authority, or known as the TRCA, was created to manage and protect the watersheds in the greater Toronto area, which includes the Rouge watershed. So the original Rouge Park was established by the province of Ontario in 1995, and it was about 50 square kilometers of parkland, and this area was managed by the TRCA. Then later, the Rouge Park Alliance formed by advocacy from the Scarborough community and others and they work with notable individuals in response to a growing demand for recreational trails throughout these protected areas. Then the decision for Rouge Park to become a national park was made in 2011 after a study determined that creating a national park would be the best way to protect and manage the growing number of protected areas inside and nearby the park. So the government of Canada and the neighboring municipalities of Markham, York, Durham, and Pickering each contributed lands to what became Rouge National Urban Park. While Toronto and the surrounding cities began to develop and expand, we saw many groups and important figures fight for the protection of Rouge Park. Without their hard work and dedication in the past, Canada's first national urban park may not have existed. And once Rouge Park came into existence, we continued having more dedicated volunteers taking time to help protect the park and assist the work being done at Rouge Park under the Rouge Park Alliance. A lot has changed at Rouge National Urban Park over the years. Here's a look at what that has looked like. Parks Canada first committed to working towards the creation of Rouge National Urban Park in 2011. And since then, the agency has consulted with more than 20,000 Canadians and has been working closely with First Nations, all levels of government, community groups, conservationists, farmers, and residents to realize the dream of creating Canada's first national urban park. From 2013 to 2015, the lands owned by various entities were transferred to a Rouge National Urban Park. And then in June 2014, um, a draft document, a draft management plan that will guide management of the park over a 10 year period was released for public review. And by May 2015, Rouge National Urban Park had officially was officially created and the Rouge National Urban Park Act came into force by order in council. By June 2019, Rouge National Urban Park reached, received 95% of its total expected lands. And today, 97% of these land transfers are complete and Parks Canada is working hard to encourage visitors to protect this special place 
while we improve and establish visitor services and amenities such as restrooms, wayfinding signage, trails, and day use areas. Here's a timeline summarizing our parks development throughout the past decade, which I've briefly gone over in the previous slide. Um, so today, um, in just before 2020, in August 2019, the Rouge National Urban Park Education and Welcome Center was built. And in June 2019, about 18.5 square kilometers of tr land transfer was further completed. So Parks Canada today manages 75 square kilometers of the 79 square kilometers of lands that's intended for Rouge. And once the land transfers are complete, Rouge National Urban Park will be the largest urban park in North America. It would be 23 times larger than Central Park in New York City and 19 times larger than Stanley Park in Vancouver. Here's a photo, a map of the park that shows how it goes all the way from Lake Ontario, up the beach up north, past the zoo, and into an area called the Oak Ridges Moraine up here, where there are lots of hills and farmland. The park crosses many communities, the township of Uxbridge, city of Pickering, city of Toronto, city of Markham, and the town of Whitchurch Stouffville. The reason we wanted to create a national urban park in the greater Toronto area is because more than 20% of Canada's population, that is, 70, that is 7 million people, live in the greater Toronto area, and the nearest national park was a three-hour drive away. So with the creation of Rouge National Urban Park, the largest city in Canada now has a national urban park that's within a one hour drive, is very accessible for everyone to visit and is always free. Rouge Park is the only national protected area that's accessible by public transit. You can reach the park by GO train, subway, TTC and shuttle buses. We have three main access points to have parking. They are the Zoo Road Welcome Area, Reeser Road Day Use Area, and the 19th Avenue Day Use Area. You can find out more information about how to get here on our website. So here's a list of some of the activities that you can do in the park. For hiking, we have 15 different hiking trails. Most of the trails are ranked as easy or moderate and all feature great views of marshes, rivers, bluffs, and meadows. We will put a link into the chat for a list of these hiking trails. Cycling also a great activity to do in the park. The park's farmland and forests provide a lovely rural atmosphere and a sense that you are far away from the city. There are also very few traffic lights to interrupt your ride, while the gentle rolling hills offer a nice workout. Do note that cycling is not permitted on hiking trails in order to, provide, to protect the sensitive natural ecosystems and reduce trail erosion. Instead, the park's road network offers excellent opportunities for cyclists to explore the area. We can also camp in the park, but unfortunately the campground is under renovations right now, but do check back next summer for opportunities to camp in the only campground in the greater Toronto area. And fishing at the mouth of the Rouge River and surrounding marsh area is a very popular activity. Fishing in the park is permitted so long as you have a valid Ontario fishing license. A refreshing swim at Rouge Park is a popular activity on hot summer days. Enjoy a sandy beach and the cool waters of Lake Ontario at our popular Rouge Beach. Finally, 
bird watching is a very fun activity that you can do all year round. All you really need is a pair of binoculars and a bird guide or app to help you with bird identification. The concept of a national urban park was something new for Parks Canada. The creation of Rouge is monumental because it is Canada's first and only national urban park. The Rouge has many roads and some 400 series highways, as well as railways that serve freight trains and commuter trains. The Rouge is a natural and it has some of the last few working farms in the greater Toronto area. Rouge is home to Canada's last remaining wetland and rare Carolinian forests with over 1,700 species of plants and animals living here. We have 762 plant species, 225 bird species, 55 fish species, 27 animal species, and 19 reptile and amphibian species. So here are some pictures of some of the species that we protect in, at Rouge, and we rely on visitors to help us. Are we able to match the plant to the numbers on the screen? I think we have a poll for this. Um, if we could pull that up. Excellent. Okay, so for example, is number one you see a trillium or is it a blanding's turtle? What do you think picture two is? And we'll give everyone some time to read through all the options and think about what every what each picture is. Okay, cool. Uh, let's do maybe 10 more seconds for voting. Excellent. Okay, yes, I think we, we're pretty split, but six of us definitely hit that we hit the mark there. Uh, but it, this was kind of tricky because it's kind of hard to sometimes know what all the names mean and what kind of animal they refer to or natural or wildlife. So one is a trillium, um, two is a Baltimore Oriole, three is a monarch butterfly, and four is a Blanding's turtle. So these are all examples of some um, plant, animal, reptile and bird species that you might be able to spot at Rouge National Park. Awesome. So in addition to national natural heritage at Rouge, there's over 10,000 years of human history and some of Canada's oldest indigenous sites. Uh, many First Nations groups have lived, hunted, fished in this, on this land, and the river was used as a means of transportation and a trade part of a trade route known as the Carrying Place Trail that also includes the Humber River. As European cultures settled on the land, more farming was established, um, orchards and livestock were brought in, and roads, roads were built as different boroughs of Toronto group. And the formation of the First Nations Advisory Circle ensures that we are able to protect the cultural heritage of Bruges from the past to the present and into the future. 
They play a very vital role to the park because they are consulted on with the activities in and decisions of the park. In the late 1800s, farmers from Pennsylvania moved to Canada and started to develop their farming bridge in Ontario. Some of these farmers continue to farm in the Rouge Valley today. Many farms in Rouge are located on class one soil, a very rare and fertile soil type of soil in Canada. And Rouge National Urban Park is different from all other parks Canada locations and sites because of this, because Rouge has, because Parks Canada has made it a point and relies on visitors to help protect the agricultural lands in Rouge. Some of the agricultural objectives include the continuation of existing farming, diversification of farming, incorporation of beneficial management practices, and maintaining a lived-in landscape at Rouge. Next, I will talk about some examples of past and ongoing projects at Rouge that we are very proud of. Currently, the Blanding's turtles are considered a threatened species in Canada and Ontario. Blanding's turtles can live up to 80 years and they are always smiling. They're nicknamed the smiling turtle because of the yellow chin, uh, because of the yellow under their chin that makes them look like they're smiling. The turtles play a very important role in many indigenous people's spiritual beliefs and ceremonies. To many Algonquin and Iroquoian speaking people, turtles are a teacher and play an integral role in the creation story. Um, they allowed earth to be formed on its back and the 13 spots on their shell represent the 13 full moons of the year. There are also many legends on how the Blanding's turtle got its, um, got its yellow chin and in many indigenous stories, the turtles are referred to as turtle with the sun under its chin. If you're interested to learn more about these stories or traditional ecological knowledge, our partners at the Toronto Zoo and their collaborators put together a ways of knowing guide um, that Bradley will put in the chat if you are interested. In 2014, we released 10 turtles with our partners. Then we released 20, 24 in 2015, 36 in 2016, 49 in 2017 and 2018, 48 in 2019, 57 in 2020, and most recently 49 turtles in 2021. So as of today, we've released 322 turtles, two-year-old Blanding's turtles as part of the Head Start program, and 184 hatchling Blanding's turtles into a variety of wetland habitats in Rouge National Urban Park. So someone has asked, what is this for? Uh, While well, Parks Canada is working with our partners like the Toronto Zoo and Adopt a Pond to raise the population of Blanding's turtles to a stable level. The Toronto Zoo is leading the Head Start project where the eggs of the Blanding's turtles from healthy populations in Canada are brought to the zoo to grow for the next two years. Since the turtles do not hibernate, they keep growing over winter. So the size that they reach after two years is equal to a four-year-old Blanding's turtle in the wild. Last year, there was even more restoration and farmland enhancement in the park. And to date, 77 ecological restoration projects have been included in the Rouge, which saw more than 71 hectares of wetland um, land near the water's edge and forest habitats restored. And in collaboration with our partners, more than 56,000 native trees and shrubs will be planted this year in the park. The tree planting at Rouge Park is a collaboration between Parks Canada, the Toronto Region Conservation Authority, the 
Forest Ontario and was made possible by the Government of Canada's Two Billion Trees Commitment. With, 10, 000, with over 10,000 years of human history at Rouge, there is an abundance of cultural and historical heritage as well. In the past, Rouge National Urban Park has conducted archeological field work on sites throughout the park. Archeological assessment is part of an impact assessment process required by law in Canada before any work and development can take place. This is to make sure that any important cultural sites are understood and protected. The First Nations Advisory Circle Field Liaison joined the Rouge Archaeological Team on site to conduct the field work. And there are about 326 registered archaeological sites at the park that are both Indigenous and settler. And these sites date from the Archaic period which is from 7,000 BC to 10 to 1,000 BC through to the contact period, which is around 1650 and well into the 20th century. So this is pretty cool. Rouge National Urban Park works with 10 First Nation communities who sit on the First Nations Advisory Committee, otherwise known as FNAC. This includes the Seven Williams Treaties Nations, Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Six Nations of the Grand River, and the Huron Wendat First Nation. The park works with FNAC on many different projects throughout the Rouge. For example, at our annual FNAC meetings, they are either annual or biannual and they have a full round table sharing and discussion about what is going on at the park that's related to visitor experience, resource conservation, capital and asset projects, and more. FNAC meetings are an important way for Rouge to fulfill our duty to consult and build relationship with the First Nation partner. And on uh, employee awareness events, we build awareness and an education on Indigenous issues and topics within Rouge Park staff. We have an Indigenous relations team who regularly engages with staff, and the team also hosts movie or film screenings, guest speakers from uh, FNAC, and topics such as Indigenous Toronto. The Indigenous Relations team also conducts weekly media scans to wear rare aware, raise awareness about the latest news in Indigenous relations. And finally, project engagement um, involves two of our ongoing projects. One is Rouge Gateway, which is part's flagship welcome area that has been in full engagement mode in early 2021 with the project consultants, our staff, and with over 50 hours of engagement with FNAC members. Stories of Canada is a funding opportunity through the Parks Canada National Office that will allow Rouge to work with dedicated FNAC community representatives to work on pro park projects, including the Rouge Gateway and to collaborate and share the stories of their respective Indigenous culture in a meaningful and empowering way. So there are many ways to stay connected with us at Rouge Park. Uh, please always check our website for the most up-to-date information. The activities on this slide here, guided walks, community festivals, stewardship events, learn to camp, overnight camping trips, and social are unfortunately not available currently due to COVID, but we hope we can resume them in the future. So when you are visiting Rouge during COVID, there are a few different ways that you can help us. Please visit the website before you go so you are up to date on what is going on in the park. And perhaps to visit during our less busy hours, that's early morning, late evenings during the week. 
can carry a mask with you and keep your distance from others. You can also try and visit other areas of the park. Many of our visitors stay in the south end near the beach, but we have lots of great trails and areas to explore in the north area of the park. And most importantly is to please do not litter, dump garbage, or harvest in the park. We want to keep the park as clean as possible. So please take everything you bring with you. Here is information about our website. And if you have any questions or concerns, uh, we can be reached on, by email or through phone. And you can stay updated with us on our Twitter or Facebook. Okay, I'm lagging, but thankfully that was the last slide. Um, so this brings to the end of our presentation, and we have about 15 minutes to answer some questions. Okay. Yeah, so this program, it's part of our, uh, we'll be presenting a four part series. So this was the first presentation of the series where we just wanted to talk a bit about the Rouge, its history, what you can kind of expect when you visit the, with, visit the place. So that gives kind of some context for when you are coming to camp. And then don't worry, our other presentations will definitely touch more about camping and wildlife and staying safe. And in the meantime, if you do want to explore our website about camping, um, I think we can put a link into the chat about our uh, like going to camp resources and just information about camp. I'm going to pop back in here. I think um, I think there aren't any questions right now. I don't see anything coming on Facebook Live, though I see some people are watching us there. Um, so just give it a couple more minutes to see if uh, anybody has any more questions. Um, what are your favorite things to do, uh, Emily and Briley, at the Rouge National Park? What do you recommend most of all? Well, like, do you want me to go first? I could go first. Um, I really love hiking in the park. I think it's it's like a very nice way to take a break from the busyness of the city and kind of retreat a little bit into the woods and into nature. And it's always like driving through the Rouge. It's very scenic. Um, you're kind of in and out of the city and of the park. You don't know kind of like where the park ends or begins, but you can see how there is like so much beautiful landscape around you that has been uh, protected and conserved. And so I really love like hiking and like taking scenic drives and just enjoying the views. Um, that's one of my favorite things to do. Nice. How about you, Briley? Yeah, I'd have to agree with Emily. Um, hiking is one of my favorite activities in the park. I really love uh, the Orchard Trail. It's right along the Rouge River. Um, it's very scenic. There's lots of lookout points and you're right in the forest as well. That's one of my favorite hikes I like to do. Um, I also love going down to the beach. There's a great beach area um, near Lake Ontario and that's a great spot to hang out with friends and family, maybe even have a picnic. Awesome. Uh, we have a poll actually that um, we didn't run, which maybe this is a good time to uh, ask our participants. So it's uh, what activities are you looking forward to doing at Rouge National Park? So I'm going to launch that poll and see what, uh, unfortunately, those of you on Facebook Live can't participate in the poll, but we'll tell you what they said. The options are hiking, camping, fishing, cycling, swimming, or bird watching. So if you are watching us on Facebook Live right now, um, feel free to just add that in the chat. I'm seeing a variety of things here. 
we'll give it a minute for everybody to decide. Maybe we should have made this a multiple choice because <laughs> there's lots of things. I think I would like to do all of these things, to be honest with you. Some more votes coming in. Yeah, somebody in the chat said camping and hiking for sure. All right, I'm gonna end polling. So most people here are saying hiking and then a little mix of cycling, swimming and bird watching. Um, yeah, great. Oh, I'll share the results with you. Wonderful, okay. All right, well, if there are no other questions, then it will, we'll wrap it up here. So thank you so much to Emily and Briley for this wonderful presentation. Again, um, don't forget to join us next week for Know Before You Go, your first front country camping trip. Um, same time, same place. I put the registration link in the description on Facebook Live and I put it in the chat here on Zoom. So we hope to see you all next time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Megan and Brampton Public Library for hosting us. Thank you, everyone, for joining and interacting virtually with us today. And I hope everyone has a great afternoon and start of summer. Yeah. Okay. Bye, everyone. Take care, everyone. Bye.